Hi, this is Greg Koopman. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about how to access an Azure data lake uh, on the Gen 2 storage. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and create a new storage account real quick uh, to show you what I'm creating here. So right now I have my, I'm calling it Coop Data Lake Gen 2 here as my storage account name. And I'm going to use standard performance. And here's an important part, storage V2, which is general purpose V2. That's going to form our data lake. That's what our format for our data lake is going to be. And I'm going to use local redundant and hot. Okay, so let's go to next. Uh, networking, and that doesn't matter. Advanced. This is another important piece where it says data lake stores Gen 2 hierarchical data namespace. You want to enable that. Okay, if you're going to have a data lake. All right. So next and next and create. Okay, so now we have my new storage account here, and I need to get a blob container. So I'm going to create a blob container real quick to begin my data lake. And so I'm going to right click, create a new blob container. I'm going to call this a tennis shop that does sales and that sort of thing. Okay, so I got a tennis shop. Now I need to bring some data in. So I have some sales, which every day. The salespeople in the tennis center or tennis shop bring data in. Okay, they import this data once a day. All right, at the end of the day. So that way I can tell what my sales are. Okay, so very small operation here. So let's upload. I'm going to upload a folder. Okay, so I'm going to upload a, a folder called sales. Okay, so there's a lot of things under sales we'll look at in a minute. I'm just going to select sales and upload. Okay, so my sales is going into my tennis shop container. All right, so here's my sales folder. And I have three folders under them, right, that emulates what might happen at data lake. At data lake, every day you have a bunch of data being pushed in there. So many times each file... Uh, you bring in with the same structure we'll have a separate folder for every day of the of the year for every day we'll have its own specific folder okay just as in this case so on April 1st one file came in and it's called and, and ben, basically you'd have the same naming convention you don't have to but that's the idea of the format you, you but the format has to be the same that's the main thing here so on uh, April 1st we had one file on April Second, we had one file. On April 3rd, we had two files, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, a couple of those files. Okay, so our first file uh, has one, on the uh, April 1st, has one customer called John Smith, and he bought $500 worth of things, okay? All right, so that's look at sales uh, April 1st, right? Then we have another one, April 3rd, underscore 2, and Rod Labor bought $100 worth of things, okay? And so on and so on. So each one of these files has um, a couple, one or two rows of data in it, basically. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to bring in this data, okay? All right, so that's our goal. So that's our goal is to bring in all sales data into this uh, Power BI report, okay? So remember, we have a storage, this is our storage account. This is our container. Within that container, we have these different sale, sales folders. Okay, we have a sales folder, rather. And then under there, we have other um, folders. Okay, and those folders contain the data that is all in the same format. Okay, so let's go to Power BI and see how we make this all work. Okay, so now we're in Power BI. So we have a fresh slate here. I'm going to go to Get Data. I'm going to go down to More because it's not here for Azure uh, Gen 2 data. I go to more. I then go to Azure. And here's all my Azure data sources. And here's your Azure Data Lake stores Gen 2. Okay. So that's where my uh, data is stored. So I'm going to connect to that, right? Well, it's not going to just let me connect. That's for sure. So the first thing I have to do is put a URL in for it. Okay. So let's go get our URL for this storage Gen 2 account. In order to do that, you need to go into your storage accounts, locate your storage account, which is here, GCoop Data Lake Gen 2. Okay, so I'm going to click on that. 
okay and now what I need is the um, the URL that points to my folders okay so what you do is you're on this you're already here so you can see gcoop up here we're in the overview tab we go down to we go down to properties and inside properties we go down to where it says data lake storage as you see hierarchical namespace is enabled and here's your primary ADLS file system endpoint that's what you need to get to begin with okay so you need to have that so I copy that I go back to my Power BI I paste that here then at the end of this I put in my folders okay and my folders as we recall for that that's our just our root of that uh, of that storage account right so our, the rest we had sales uh, actually we had tennis shop was our first was our container then we had sales right so everything under sales folder all those say it said all those folders with the dates and everything else and the files within those all were go down as children of this folder sales so that's where I want to be for my URL so I say okay then it asked me to sign in to the Azure account okay now you can either sign in or you can use your account key all right um, in this case I'm going to sign in so I go to sign in go to my account I get my password which I have copied in my clipboard okay now I sign in now it says you are currently signed in so you either have to have an account key or an organizational account so I use the organizational account so now I go to connect and it says we encountered an error while trying to connect access to the resource is forbidden okay well it's forbidden so something's wrong so I went through uh, a couple hurdles here because I do own my own Azure account uh, I was I didn't really think it was necessarily a permissions issue okay I have to go set up a, uh, I have to assign my account in this case to a role all right so let's go do that so I'm on my storage account and there's something called access control right here I am okay I go to I am and really what I want to do is add a role assignment so what I want to do here is let's say ahead and go ahead and add and go up to select role and what I want to add is is a blob reader storage blob reader right here so I identify the role I want to assign now I got to figure out make sure I, I'm able to assign it to somebody so who I'm going to assign it to is going to be SQL greg.coopman at sqlcoop.com right there okay all right so now I'm going to save that so it selected it and it's down in here selected members I'm gonna hit save so now I'm part of that role that blob reader role okay <clears throat> and that's the key to getting this working right okay so now if I come in here and I look for what I have assigned to myself click and I'll see that I have different role assignments I have a service administrator but now I have the storage blob reader assigned to me as a role assignment okay so that's what I need in order to access this this folder structure okay so let's go back and I'm just going to go ahead and retry it because now I should have rights let's see if it actually works I'm not sure whether it's going to pick it up but now that I gave that right, nope, it didn't. So let's go ahead and edit it again. It's asking for the sales. Say okay. Okay, it looks like I have to get out of this thing. Okay, so let's start over. Get data. More. Azure. And now actually it's saved. Let's... Let me show you. It saved my um, some. It saved my information here. I'm going to clear that just so I get 
back to the prompt. If I don't clear it, it won't even prompt me for my uh, user credentials. And then I just go right in. I want you to see, to see go through the whole thing again. So let's go get data. Um, and by the way, once you get this right, you just have to do it really once. So more Azure Gen 2 connect. It's asking for the URL again. Tennis shop. Everything has to be spelled right, by the way. And sales, okay? So I say okay. Okay, sensitivity. Okay, it like the case, it's case sensitive there. So let's go ahead and sign in again. Didn't even get me to that point since it was, it was since it was case sensitive and I wasn't putting in the proper case. So I got my password. Sign in. It's signing in and now it's asking to connect and now we should get a connection. There we go. We got our connection. Notice notice that now up here it shows me it goes through it goes through that sales folder looks at all its folders and all the files within those and it just cascades through them all and finds all the all of the uh files right so 401 okay so here's my sales right there's my different files i talked about at the beginning so they're all there but we don't want to bring them in separately no way so we combine them, right? So I'm going to combine them in this load just because I know how what they look like. They're pretty basic. So I'm just going to combine and load. It will go ahead and apply I will apply changes. Okay, it's going to say, it's going to ask me what the structure more or less is. So basically I just need to, it will ask me all these different ones here. I'm just going to say first file and I'm just going to go ahead and choose the sheet. And all of them are date customer sales format, which I know, which is fine with, is exactly the way I want it. And that's the way it should be in a data lake. Okay. And I say, okay. And now it's bringing in the data. Evaluating query. So, like I said, for there is three days there worth of data in three different folders. One had two, each of the first two, the first two only had one entry. And the third one, uh, had two different files with a couple entries each. So let's see what we got. Okay, so that's done, right? So it gave me the, the query. They called the table query, which we can just go ahead and change that if we want and just change that to... We'll go back to our report. And let's just create a quick report with this. I'm going to create a little matrix. So I always love matrices. And I'm just going to say date... Customer and sales. And I'll include source name, where the what file it came from. That's all that's kind of interesting. So if I expand this out a little bit, okay, I don't want that. I want them all on the rows. So I'm gonna say the customer I want right here in the rows, and the values I want uh that that's fine. So now I'm just gonna expand Wednesday and we're gonna see what customers we had. We had John Smith, he spent five hundred dollars. On Thursday, we had, oh, Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, and Greg Koopman were there. Okay, and on Friday, we also had Greg Koopman returning because he needs lots of practice. And Raphael Nadal, Rieger Federer, and Rod Laver showed up. Okay, with a total sales for three days of 742. Okay, that's okay. So that's what happened. So you see how, and if I hit refresh, right, is this going to go out? into those folders and look for any folder and file underneath that structure with that with that structure uh, that relate to that file and they're just going to bring it in. Okay, so obviously we just brought it in. It's going to be the same, right? But now let's go ahead and add a f another folder. Let's add two more folders and put some more data in there, okay, and see what happens. So the reports out there, people are using it every day. They have to go, you know, they, it's refreshed every day. So let's go out and add a couple more uh, files and folders to this to this structure. So I go out to Microsoft Azure Storage Explorer, and now I'm going to I'm just going to create a folder under Sales Three, right? 
create a new folder. I'm just going to call it, you see, you don't even have to call it anything special. You want to, you know, just because you, you need to maintain these things and you should have proper name. But I want to point out you don't have to. That it will read, as long as it's under that folder, the initial folder sales, it's going to consider everything under there a sales file and it should have the same structure. So I'm going to put miscellaneous here. I'm going to upload another file I created. And this file was somebody came in um, and they, the person running this show at the nighttime didn't know how to do this right. So they added the sales later and they didn't know what to call it. So they called it the sales Agassi. Okay. So apparently Andre Agassi showed up and bought a couple sweatbands or something. So Agassi showed up. And they put it under its own separate folder because he's special. And um, that's it. So now he's in there, okay, with his sales data. Okay, and then by the time we get back to it, we got another folder um, that's sales for for April 4th, okay, because now it's time for April 4th data to come in. Uh, upload that file. Of course, all this is automated through ETL and everything else. So, or however you do it, it doesn't have to be, but it is. So that's sales 04 data. So now we've added two more tables, right? So now we've added the Agassi file and the 04 table. Okay. And so let's go back to our, our information. Now it's just loaded. We didn't do anything to this report. The report's just sitting here, right? But when we go to refresh it, let's see what we got. We got, what do we got? Like three days here. And on the third, we have, what, four different ones. Greg, Raphael, Rieger, and Rod, right? But we put in some more information into the file structure over there, into the file folders, into our data lake. Will it show up? That's the real question. Hope so. So let's see. So I'm going to refresh it. Refresh. Or notice there's an 03 here, 02 and 01. No, no 04 yet. And no Agassi yet, okay? So let's go ahead and refresh. It goes out and refreshes. And notice our information. There's more in our information here. So in our 03 data, there he is at Andre Agassi, okay? And under our Saturday 04 data, Ah, Bjorn Borg came by and bought $700 worth of Fila. Okay, very good. So that's our demonstration for you today. And that's how you can access a uh, data storage account, data lake in Gen 2 um, from your Power BI. Hope you liked it. Hope you use it. Good luck.